Following the Hamas attack on Israel on October 7th, 2023, and the ensuing Israeli counterattacks that would become the Israel-Hamas war in Palestine, pro-Palestinian students began a campaign of campus activism that included multiple marches, a Starbucks boycott, and pressure on UB administration and student government to divest funds directed to Israel. On May 1st, 2024, in solidarity with the nationwide protests on college campuses, UB Students for Justice in Palestine announced a march on campus to encourage divestment with advertising featuring encampments from other universities. The march began on May 2nd in front of the Student Union and wound its way through campus buildings, briefly stopping in One World Cafe to chant in front of the students present. The march continued through campus, eventually congregating in a grassy area between Hochstetter Hall and the Flint bus loop. The protesters continued chanting while some began to set up tents and tables. UB police attempted to nip the encampment in the bud, but the protesters locked arms and prevented officers from reaching the tents. The UB police officers were thwarted and called in officers from departments and other jurisdictions. Amherst police are the first to arrive. My grandpa moved as an immigrant from Palestine before I was born, of course, but I went back to the West Bank multiple times. Mm -hmm. I've seen the apartheid, I've seen everything in my own eyes. It's hard to deny it when you see it yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm Palestinian. It's kind of an obligation, at least to me, to be here, to support my people back home. But to everybody else that's not Palestinian, coming out to support, I mean, everything, mm -hmm. everything to them. Police eventually announced that the protesters must take down the encampment or face arrest. Due to an encampment, I order all of these tents located at Flint Loop on the University of Buffalo North Campus to be removed within the next 15 minutes or you'll be subjected to an arrest for trespass and obstruction. You have the right to assemble, but encampment is unlawful. Coming in in 15 minutes if the tents are up. Just think about that, okay? They're just tents. They're coming in. They're tents. How are they are on our own? They are tents. Because of the tents. Without the tents, you guys can stay here till dusk. Another warning is given with 10 minutes until arrests are to be made, and the protesters begin to take the tents down. UB police then order them to also remove the pallets being used to form the outer circle. The materials are ordered to be moved to a sidewalk near Mary Talbert Way and the protest is then converted to a sit-in. For about two hours, protesters socialize, eat snacks, and play music. The police presence was reduced during this period until shortly before 8 p.m. when officers began to get into formation and ordered the protesters to disperse before 8.22 or face arrest. The officers originally intended to begin making arrests at 8.17, but delayed intervention by five minutes to accommodate some protesters' sunset prayer. Officers from the Erie County Sheriff's Office, State Police, Amherst, Kenmore, and both the town and city of Tonawanda are organized into position as the prayer concludes, then begin moving into the protest circle. The time is 8.15 p.m. At 8.24, the officers move into the crowd. Let them go! Let them go! Let them go! 
A UB statement said that 15 people were arrested, seven of those being UB students. The rest were unaffiliated with the university. The statement claimed that a 67-year-old man was hospitalized with a minor arm injury. Protest organizers say that the number of arrested individuals was higher. They claim that 18 demonstrators were arrested and two were hospitalized. Some apprehended protesters were loaded onto a UB Stampede bus and taken to UB Center for Tomorrow off campus and chanted Free Palestine as they were driven away from Flint Loop. Police pursued the protesters down Mary Talbert Way into parking lots, where the crowd on this part of campus disperses. The officers head back to the original protest location. Meanwhile on campus, a different cluster of officers and protesters is also clashing. Get the 
Confrontation between protesters and police lasted for about 25 minutes. UB said the protesters violated a 2020 university policy that prohibits indoor and outdoor encampments and overnight assemblies. Following the chaos, students gradually leave the area as police encourage them to leave. Some stick around to get confiscated items from the protest circle back. By 10 o'clock, nearly all students and officers had left the scene. The following Friday, Students for Justice in Palestine attempted to organize a march in protest of the police treatment of protesters and to continue advocating for university divestment from Israel. The march was intended to start in One World Cafe, but UB locked all entrances to Cape and Hall in response. The beginning speeches take place outside instead. The march began at Cape and Hall and immediately walked past the previous night's protest area. It then followed Mary Talbert Way to the front of the student union, then back to the academic spine. Cape and Hall, One World Cafe, and Silverman Library remained closed until past 9 p.m. that night with officers stationed at all entrances. UB also closed the Law Library in O'Brien Hall and the Student Union's Dining Center and limited access to Talbert Hall. The President's and Provost offices were also locked. Additionally, the university used snowplows to block traffic entering Flint Loop. <laughs> What the crowd? Around 4.45, student organizers and Western New York community members spoke to the crowd of protesters in the grassy lawn outside of Hochstetter Hall, where Wednesday's attempted encampment and many of the arrests occurred. Hands off our students now! 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 We are here a hundred percent in solidarity with an immediate and permanent ceasefire now in Gaza, an end to apartheid and occupation, and a free Palestine. Yeah! And it is a 
of content. So, we applaud the moral clarity of thousands of students across the U.S. who are taking a stance to demand justice in Palestine and demanding that their institutions of higher education and their complicity in genocide. And to the students across the country who are participating in the protest, we as JVT are in solidarity with you. We say, not in our name, and never again is now. Woo!